For those of you who are not familiar with how multinational companies trade, this is a fascinating journey. The journey of the bananas, the fruit themselves, by boat, out of Latin America, into England. Let's assume we're, we go into a shop around the corner and buy a pound's worth of bananas. Let's look at the money, how the money's spread out across the different places. First of all, 13 pence of that pound stays in the producer country, um, of which 1.5 is labour costs, 10.5 is production costs, 1 pence or 1% is taxable profits left there with a tax rate of 30%, 0.3 pence of, of tax stays in the producer country. By the way, all of these figures were verified and confirmed by the company. The company accepted the figures. So there's never been any dispute about this. Now, the journey on paper is a much more exotic journey. Um, and I'd like to stress something. Everything here that happens is permissible under the, the global rules. And that's the problem. The global rules are completely broken. So they invoice... Oh, what's happened there? They invoice from sub the, the producer company uh, subsidiary in Latin America onto the Cayman Islands where they charge for the use of their own purchasing network. Let's just stop and think about it. They charge for the use of their own purchasing network. They created an intellectual property right called a purchasing network. And they charge themselves. Look at the scale. Eight pence compared to 13, point, 13 pence. You know, a very significant charge. On to Luxembourg, where they charge themselves for the use of their own finance. On to Ireland, where they charge for the use of their brand. Now, how many of you have ever gone into the grocery shop and said, I will have a kilo of your finest geese bananas, please, my good man? <laughs> There's only one... There's only one recognised brand which has any value in this country and in most countries, and that's fair, <coughs> fair trade. No one else goes out and says, oh, I must have Dole, I love Dole. Fantastic. Just doesn't happen. Then on to the Isle of Man, where they charge for the use of their own insurance services, the reinsurance service. On to Jersey, where they charge for the use of management <coughs> services. Now, this is actually why I knew about this, because I'd helped set that company up. And if I told you that that company currently charges approximately 100 million a year for the use of management services. And if you go to the office, as I did two years ago with the French television uh, team, the office was abandoned. They have 1980s Amstrad computers on their desk. The photographer who, lives in, who works in the office next door said, oh, they come once a month to collect the mail, that's about it. But they're charging hundreds of millions for management services. It's completely bogus. Of course. And then on to Bermuda, where they charge... Whoops, what happened there? Where they charge themselves with the use of their own distribution network. Now, what's, what's happened is your piece of fruit has been repackaged as a whole set of services and intellectual property rights, which allow them to shift all of their extraordinary profits offshore to a no-tax environment. And just look at how many of these places are British. Bermuda, Cayman, Jersey, Isle of Man. All British. We can truly say that we are the world's leading tax haven. <coughs> and then on to the final consumer. Now, what applies to bananas applies to virtually every single traded commodity, goods, services in the world. <coughs> 